Hi everybody, it's Michael Andre Ford in San Antonio, Texas, your Angel Intuitive with my third live stream. And just in case, it's Michael Andre Ford in Texas with my third live stream on Facebook. Still getting used to this, I hopefully have some new material and some fun stuff you can participate in today. I'm just here to talk about a little bit of angels, the woo woo woo, spirit guides, letting go more importantly, being in the moment, the power of now, if you like Eckhart Tolle, a little bit of Abraham Hicks as well, the whole law of attraction, what you put out there is what you get, and other stuff. So if you've got questions, be sure to send them over. I am gonna be looking at comments. Um, you'll see me a little distracted, but we're going to do a few exercises today. I'll get chatting, I'll circle back from time to time to certain um, stuff that makes this a business, a man has to eat, and then uh, we'll, Take a chance. If you're watching or you're watching this at a later time, you'll have a chance to take a breath, let go, and also maybe see a little bit of energy. That could be pushing it a little, but guess what? You're already seeing energy every day. You just aren't acknowledging it. And I'll give you one quick metaphor. You've passed 30 to 40,000 light bulbs or light sources as you travel around maybe the last six weeks, pandemic, six months maybe, but when was the last time you looked at a classic light bulb? I mean, the old school one from the 80s or the 70s, you know, the little filament inside, you looked at the electricity, you marveled at it, you thought, wow, what a marvel of ingenuity. You said, thank you, Thomas Edison, thank you, Ben Franklin. You even called a relative and said, I just looked at an old school light bulb. Wow, I was impressed, miracle. That relative would probably be like, hey, lay off the juice. But my point of this is we're all moving too fast. We've got thoughts to think, we've got appointments to make, we've got businesses to go do, kids to take care of, and all those other obligations. It keeps us up here in thinking. And that's gonna to get to the Plato's cave metaphor, which is a classic metaphor, but everyone else also has their own metaphors to describe the same thing. We're so busy up here that it can be difficult, except through exercise, you know, some of the philosophical pursuits, um, and, and this is why so many of these self-help woo-woo-woo spiritual experts have uh, helped us out so much. They help us slow down and realize we're not our thinking, we're not what's going on up here, and that the second we drop into our heart, all the happy moments take place. And I would also argue that more than just happy moments happen there. All the action, all the important stuff, unconditional love, you connect to your higher self, your soul if you wish, you shine. So when you fully let go of thinking and what you think your obligations are, where you think you need to be, and let's flip that around. What you think you're missing, what you think you're lacking, where you think you've fallen short, judging. Um, as soon as you let go of the details, you're here in your heart, and trust me, if there's one thing I've seen, everyone is perfectly capable of having a ginormous heart. And we've all experienced it as a kid, in athletics, when we're in the zone, in our artistic pursuits, musical pursuits, when we're doing business or whatever we do in life that is our thing. You're on a roll at that point, you're having fun, you're in the flow, you're in harmony, um, and that's when I think you, I, I'd like to say you could find a little bit more joy. Now, let's get back to what I do. I help people actually meet bona fide, real angels. Whether you're religious, not religious, it doesn't matter your organizational bent or which country you've come from, anyone can do this. All languages are spoken. I'm off the hook. I've got testimonials. Go to www.michaelandreford. Check out the testimonial page. 50 plus testimonials over the last seven or eight years. You get a direct experience, so you actually hear directly. All languages spoken. I've got photographs by the thousands, you only need a few. You put your eyes on a photo of an angel, that photo that's static, a colorful ball of light maybe, maybe a silhouette, more specific shape, can actually move and change colors if you'll allow for it. I use historical photos. Um, those, a historical photo should not be able to move in the slightest, but those can wink, shrug, move their hands, smile, all in an instant. Part of your brain, and this is the biggest lesson of everything I think that I could possibly pass along. Part of your brain will be like, wow, I just saw a smile. And the other part of your brain will be like, I didn't just see that. It would be the same for seeing 
an angel in the very first instance up in the corner of your room or down the hallway or outside or up in the sky, um, a little fleck of light, part of your brain's gonna be like, ooh, pretty. And the other part of your brain's gonna be like, I didn't just see that. It wants to shut down on everything. It has to control everything. And that's, I guess, what I'm gonna get back to, the big picture. We're all standing in rooms, I'm included in this. We all do lots of thinking every day. We're doing thinking and so much structure that we don't even realize we're doing the structure, even with tons of rituals, even with the spiritual practice, even being part of 19 organizations and having been to an Abraham Hicks seminar or 15 of them, Tony Robbins classes, I'm certified as this, certified as that. The thinking's not really gonna go away. So what I love to do constantly is remind people to take a load off. Don't even try. Remember to laugh more. Remember to laugh at yourself a little bit. Remember to loosen up all the structure, all the ways you do roll. The second you get out of the way you roll, your regular rituals, your regular way of thinking, your regular way of passing the day, the second you're stepping out of the comfort zone into the uncomfortable. Now I'm gonna quote, I think that NASA astronaut, I'm not gonna remember which one, it could've been Mike Mullane. He just said getting out of the uncomfortable path or the uncomfortable zone out of the comfortable zone and into the uncomfortable is what exploration is all about. And I would argue exploration never stops. You're always going to be wanting to go here to find more compassion, more joy, more comprehension, maybe more allowing. How about that? You're more, you don't have to know anything. You just have to keep experiencing living life. And I would probably say being as kind as you can to yourself. And that means other people as well. Treat everyone the way you wish to be treated. And so we're going to get to law of attraction as well, because what you put out there is what you get back. And this whole idea of getting out of a room with a beautiful view, you think it's perfectly real. There's 7 billion humans rolling with their exact reality, their exact way they think. And it's completely real. It's what you experience every day. It's what you know. You've got your job. You've got your title. You've got this role, that role. You know what you think's difficult. You know what you think you've got down pat. Um, my thing is I help people meet beings. Existence beyond human existence, beyond human thinking, that is strictly unconditional love and compassion. Just here to help. I help you let go of the structure that holds you back daily, that has you married to a clock, married to the rat race. We're all gonna think the rat race is external. But I would point out that the rat race actually is the thinking itself. And again, you know, maybe you could lighten up a little bit, 20% less thinking a day. That'd be the Olympic gold medal according to an angel named Dale. So an hour or two days, I think what I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards here, or pushing towards, just lightening up a little bit, a little laugh, enjoying where you are, loving what you're doing, appreciating where you are, appreciating what you're doing, appreciating how amazing you are, doesn't mean you can't do the details. You can't send the emails. You can't chase after your dreams. You can't chase after this or that. But the more you recognize that you're already in the most powerful moment of all, the present moment, the more that anything externally you think you need to go do will happen. And so I help you actually meet angels. I've met 150 plus angels. I've got photos of most of them, some of them. You look at a photo, put your eyes on the photo, you silently ask a question, you listen. It takes a few baby steps, you gotta get used to it, maybe for the first few seconds you hear your own voice back. But pretty quickly, your thinking side, the judging side, the part that once answers, gets on board. And you start to let go and you actually start to hear real personality of real angels. They're just here to help. They already know your situation. You've got no privacy, you're not getting judged. And if you didn't want the help, you wouldn't be asking any questions and stuff like that. So it's gonna feel like you're putting yourself out there. It could feel like jumping off a cliff, taking a huge leap, but really it's just a small exercise of letting go again that I've mentioned before that you do when you brush your teeth, go for a walk, try to fall asleep at night on a good night. So these angels are available anytime, anywhere. I've got photos as a prop. The photos are certainly helpful as a prop for convincing you to let go a little bit more, but pretty quickly I try to get you to do it without photos. Yes, it could look like you're talking to yourself in thin air, but you do it internally as well. You can go for a run and have a two-way chat with your guardian angel. We've got Native American chiefs, Dull Knife, Red Shirt, Geronimo, that are unconditional love spirit, spirit guides, that are here to help you 
um, get from point A to point B for anything, career, family, relationships, health, you name it. If you can ask the question and listen, you can get the answer. Once in a blue moon, if you kind of stepped out of your zone, you'll be told to move on on the question. Get a little laugh and you are pushing it a little and you'll, you'll get moved on to the next question. So there are Native American chiefs. There's also crazy horse, black elk, and white buffalo calf woman. Um, on the Buddhism front, there's Buddha himself, Kuan Yin, Chogyam Trungpa, the Tibetan Buddhist monk who passed away in 1987. There's Mary, Jesus, St. Francis, St. Gerard, St. Anthony joined yesterday. You can meet him as well. Um, Abe, the Abraham of old, a uh, fatherly figure, fatherly energy on everyone's team, looks like a cross between Dumbledore and Gandalf. Uh, Joseph, Samuel, two more angels. Jesus, let's take a little break on him for one second. Everyone's really into Jesus, or Sai Baba in India, or Mother Teresa, or Chogyam Trungpa. Um, Jesus these days, like a sweet jeans, white shirt, pretty laid back. Jesus is big business for good reasons and for not so good reasons. Um, compassion's here for all. I have a quote from him. I'm going to have to guess 2015. Uh, compassion is here for all. A person need only be open to receive. Just be here. Let go. A new consciousness emerges. Details are not so important. Love is love. I love that. Because what this is doing is shifting this exercise, this session, this opening up, me removing the veil, me helping you sort of just remove the blindfold, which you can do on your own. You don't need me. Um, I certainly am a quick one, though. It's slicing right through your reality, helping you set aside your thinking long enough to get a direct experience. You feel it. Um, the second you let go, you're in the moment. That moment is the moment of, ooh, I'm not sure I like this phrase, but the moment of power. If you're a soccer player and you're in the zone, you're one with the soccer ball, time picks up or slows down on the field. You're the expert. You just know where the defensive players are at. Time slows down, you navigate through, bam, ball right into the goal. Do it three more times. Whatever we're talking about, every single person has stuff that they've got down pat, but they might not give themselves credit for. I'll say brushing your teeth. I think that's the best one. Most of the time we brush our teeth, we don't overanalyze it. And a week later, we're not beating ourselves up over the top left molar. Did we do it? Did we not do it? Do we call six people about it? Do we go onto a self-help blog and get some advice? So you just have to have confidence that you already have all the tools within. And this is a bit of self-discovery. It's a journey inwards. And in a way, you're getting shown stuff that's always been there, always will, always has been available. And you're the only one that can do the discovering. Someone like me can, yes, kind of hand you a flashlight in a dark room and you can find the table with the puzzle on it. But you got to put the pieces together. You got to take some steps. The very basic step is showing up. So if you're even listening to this, congratulations, there's something up. And if you want everyone who's listening or is listening in the future replaying this, just take a huge breath, however you do it. If you've studied meditation classes, Buddhism, India, You've got an ashram you went to in the past. You're a surfer. You know what you do to let go. But it takes a lot to remember, to remember, to remember, if you can remember, when you remember, to actually slow down. I can go through days and forget to take a breath. I've had so many different techniques, a certain way I used to meditate. Change it up right now. Take a couple more. For a lot of us, it's the physical, annual physical with the doctor, a stethoscope, that we take that breath. And as Mother Teresa likes to say, 2015 and on, compassion is like a deep breath for many. They're not used to getting here and letting their perspective develop from the heart. Kindness emanating outwards. Pers perspective, understanding, there's always a greater perspective to be had. Consciousness is in trillions of levels or layers. There's never not anything going on, to borrow from Dan Millman's beautiful movie, Peaceful Warrior 2006. There's also never not some form of instruction going on. And by instruction, I mean, you got a beautiful tree out there, appreciate it. You got a beautiful dog, remember to pet your dog. iPhone, dog. Choose the dog, pet the dog, love the dog. The dog loves you back. You can hear a dog. Dogs sound like third graders. So look, there's 150 figures stuff happened like eight or nine years ago 
it hasn't stopped happening. I'm still learning all the time. Um, I learn from a lot of the people that I end up getting to help. Um, but the basic fundamental move is letting go and allowing the universe to step in. If you're Buddhist, you get it the Buddhist way, but you also get it culturally across a much broader area. This is a cross-cultural, unconditional love um, team of amazing beings who are reconciled if they're once lived here on planet Earth, um, angels, etc. You can even hear God if you own all the angel stuff and everything else. You've been going for three or four hours. I just describe God as a collective voice, um, everything answering at once. Now that can be big or hearing angels can be super big and super humbling. There's a lot of tears sometimes. People come in and they get this, uh, they get this experience and they've been carrying around a lot of baggage, a lot of thinking, and uh, the tears start flowing because you got to do a release. You can't, you can't be in complete compassion, love, harmony in your heart. Think of all the ecstatic moments you've had with family, friends, the birth of a child, a wedding, scoring the soccer goal on the field on the soccer team, um, just going for a run, running a marathon. It doesn't have to be something totally societal with like a marathon, a race, but you've just had a moment, a eureka moment. Just you've enjoyed being on the top of a beautiful mountain and the view when you're one with everything and the connectedness of everything to you and to, from you to everything else is what we're talking about here. You're giving all the thinking, the judging, the perceiving, the knowledge that blocks possibility a rest long enough to take a single breath. A laugh works even better. You can't be laughing and not be in your heart. I want to give a shout out though to Corazon Fuerte, Strongheart. She's saying hi earlier. Claude from Paris. Bonjour, Claude. Bonsoir. Um, Bienvenue ici. Uh, Diane Duffy. She said fabulous. I love it. And Zora Talby, if I said your name right, thank you very much. Thank you all for saying hi. Um, back to angels. Something special happens. You get a direct experience with angels. First, you get a pad of paper and a pen out. I got a $5 book, Listening to Angels. If you think I wrote it, thank you very much. Super short, super sweet. It's got a one-page prologue, a one-page intro, four pages, How to Listen to Angels. And then uh, an appendix that even talks about why angels now, how. I was just seeing angels in ball of light form, light energy form, as I typed. And I knocked out that short book pretty quick, checked out the editing and or the language and everything else, and, and published it in 2014. It's a guide to literally slowing down, going full stop here, and listening. We all do listening, but half of our listening, we're actually thinking about something else or what we need to say next in the conversation. I'm talking full stop listening where you're really enjoying yourself and you're getting un undiluted advice from beings who are just here to help. You have to set your intent and say, hey, help me out. And you have to be able to step out of your own way, out of your brain, into your heart, and you have to have the guts to ask. And you really just have to know how to operate a pen and paper. So the photos are awesome because they help you with the whole credibility gap. Um, if you go to my website, again, www.michaelandreford.com, I've got a testimonial section. You click all testimonials. There's 50, 55 plus testimonials, book reviews, everything else. The book is the easiest thing in the world. It's your shortest, fastest method in a do-it-yourself fashion to meeting seven angels. Archangel Michael's in there and some other angels as well. I've put up three classes at that website, courses. Each one is a 30 minute or less instruction kind of manual with one angel in each class, a Joy, a Charlotte, and a Minwala or Min and you get to meet the angel that way. That's again for all those do-it-yourselfers who are like, I don't need Mike, I can just go do this. But if you grab me for a 90-minute session, um, you can book it on the website. I take you on a journey, and I take you on a journey. I've just put two, a three-month and a six-month program out there, 27 hours for the three months, 72 hours, three times a month um, for four hours each time for six months. I put those out there because this is a really hard exercise. It's easy at first, it's easy to get open. I help you laugh, I tell you dad jokes, and so I'll give you a quick dad joke. In honor of the pandemic, but I was telling this joke before the pandemic. Where in a hospital is absolutely the worst place to play hide and seek? Where in a hospital is the worst place to play hide and seek? 
Answer, in the ICU. Everyone always says the morgue. If you tell that joke 100 times, 70 to 80 people will say the morgue. Doctors and nurses love that one. I hope you'll share that one out there. But if you're chuckling right now in any way or laughing, you've just dropped out of thinking or reacting or being skeptical. How could this guy be talking real angels? I'm in, a cre in complete agreement with anybody who's thinking this is impossible or they're not sure. It's perfectly fine. Everyone is good where they are right now. Everything in life is everyone's instruction. You have seven billion people independently running around, living their life. They're spending their energy, putting their focus on the stuff that they think is important. They're doing it their way. We couldn't ask for more. We certainly could ask for a little less harm, a little more compassion. Mankind could use a little more kindness, compassion, a little more gentleness towards each other, maybe planet Earth. But I'm not going to get too hung up on where we need to be because then we might be talking from a place of lack. And that's back to the law of attraction. Let's put everything in terms of piano keys or vibration. You know when you're having a good day or rocking out, whether we're talking business, art, athletics, and everything else. When you're here, it could be love, relationships, when it's all flowing. Um, when you're creating, writing a song, doing a, a painting and everything else. Um, you know when you're, you're on a roll or in the zone. I would put that as just being on a curve you're in your heart more, you're letting go more, you're flowing more. And if you could see that energy wise, I think, I think that would be backed up by what you saw visually in terms of your connection to everything, being at peace more, being more here, less up here and spinning. So where you put yourself is very important. Most of us are unconscious during the day or the course of the week or even a month or for, for years at a time. We're unconscious of our patterns and how where we put ourselves and what we expose ourselves to. And a lot of it's just us, on us. Um, we do a lot of thinking and ju judging, self-judging, lack of self-love, lack of appreciation, lack of just allowing how amazing life is. Now, when we were a kid at some point, we got it. We just couldn't wait to play in the next setup, the next setting. We go from the tree to the tree house, to the lawn, to the soccer ball, to the pool or wherever at some age. And then all the adult stuff started kicking in. So my big point here is that there's sort of a scale of vibration. I think Esther Hicks in her book talks about this very, very well. Ask and it is given. The Vortex, The Law of Attraction. Those are three books. If you're looking for more financial advice, Money and The Law of Attraction, our fourth book, is absolutely fantastic. If you're needing help getting out of your thinking, um, Byron Katie, Loving What Is. That's a great book as well to show you how when you speak and you say something is absolutely this way. You've got an ex, you just got out of a divorce. Yes, they're a jerk, but you're saying they're a jerk. She'll help you with that statement. She'll help you separate from what you think is your reality, what you think is their reality, how they are, to be more open and more in your heart, more caring, more flowing, more allowing more allowing for change. It's not just their change. You're not responsible for anybody else. You can only be responsible for your own actions. But in you labeling everyone else, what most people don't realize is how you're spending your energy. You're doing negativity. You're doing it at a very small incremental level if you're just sort of very quickly slapping a label on someone. But, but it's negativity nonetheless. And the more you can let go of those patterns, those behaviors, those thoughts, or catch them before you empower them, the more you're gonna find things transform in your life. And we all have directions we wanna go. We can feel stuck when it comes to relationships, a true love, a soulmate, business. I don't know where I need to move next. Um, I'm just not sure if I can own here or this happened in the past. I don't wanna repeat it. So where we put ourselves is a very, very important um, exercise. And what's great about angels is you kick me out of the way. I don't see your answers. Um, you can certainly share stuff with me and we'll talk. And I can certainly sometimes provide insight. But what I love about this is this should be one of the few services out of thousands of self-help, woo-woo-woo, spiritual, psychological, NLP experts, mastermind experts, all the rest of these classes and everything else that people are offering. They're all fantastic. But this is one where you get 
I helped set the table, but you've got to sit down and you're ordering at a restaurant and it's the angels that are the chefs back in the kitchen and the servers. They're bringing you your answers. You're not just getting an answer, you're getting it just the way you need to hear it to get fired up and motivated to then take action. And you get a chance in the middle of the answer to be like, hey, tell me more. Or I don't understand, could you clarify? And you learn to have a two-way dialogue with not just one or two angels, but dozens of angels. And you meet your own cheerleading squad. If I had to say what I really do, what my real unique life path is as it unfolds here, it's to help every person who's willing meet their own cheerleading squad. Not just angels, some spirit guides, even some passed over relatives. If you can own the angel part and own the seeing part, and again, I always mention this about the seeing. I do baby stepping for seeing in a small sort of light energy form. By that, I mean little flecks of light that are cute. You can't miss it. You'll, it lasts a tenth of a second. You're like, wow. Sometimes you're like, wow, but I'm not sure I saw that. We do it again. Finally, you own it, and you're like, I saw that. Once you're ready, and there's a certain point you're ready, after you get a few pages, 10 pages, I think the record again is uh, 49 pages of answers. Once you've gotten enough answers and enough hugs, actual hugs, hugs all different types, um, you're ready to do some real seeing out a window, down a long hallway. You can see an angel, Mother Teresa, Chogyam Trungpa, Buddha standing there. Now Buddha's a little bit different. He'll look like a 15 year old, between a 35, 15 year old golden light, kind of the shape of a man. But everybody else you should be able to see just fine, and that's with or without wings for angels. So this is a lot to grasp. Don't even try. Discount it completely, except when you read the testimonials back at my website, again, www.michaelandreford.com, those testimonials should ring true. I worked very hard donating service for seven plus years to get a lot of those testimonials. So what I'll do is shift a little bit to I'm going to take a look at some notes here from the whole Hawaiian Huna thing. There's no one way to roll. I'm happy helping anybody from any background. I just thought it would be fun to bring up um, some cool principles that I think are universal. And it happens to be the Huna Hawaiian thing. I think one of the first concepts behind the Huna idea is the world is what you think it is. All systems are arbitrary. I like that in that we know this simply from knowing that 7 billion people each have their own version of reality, their likes, their dislikes. They know what works, what doesn't work. They know everything they need to know. Uh, and we know that they're not all in lockstep. Even people in the same organization can't agree on everything. Matter of fact, if we took every Tampa Bay Buccaneers football fan, to use a football metaphor or analogy, not everyone's gonna to agree Tom Brady, the quarterback, the new quarterback, is uh, the most amazing, nor would everybody wanna meet him. And I think that's a little bit back to uh, what I do. I, I, I get different groups of folks who roll different ways. They're all good how they are. They may be doing the Buddhist thing, the Shinto thing, the Catholic thing, the Protestant thing, the agnostic thing, perfectly fine. There's, there's, this is just basic listening, being in your heart, letting the universe help, get your answers, get your hugs, see, Plato and Seneca, are part of the crew. Uh, a kapuna, or kahuna as I like to say, Auntie Margaret from Hawaii, petite little woman. She's part of the crew. Um, some fairies, Ginger, Tinkerbell. Took me six months to get over the concept of Tinkerbell. Take that one with a grain of salt. I do have one testimonial from an Omega Institute former staff member who used to book like Deepak Chopra and stuff like that at Omega, who says in her final bit of the testimonial, and Tinkerbell was my very favorite. So check that out. Um, you do the meeting, you do the hearing, you do the seeing, you get the hugs, and those hugs can turn into healing. So this is as direct an experience as it can possibly be. The photographs are awesome. Let me do this. I realize that I have let the chat button not move. So I wanna say hey to Ava Grace in Tennessee. She's on, or at least was on. I wanna say hi to Yanetta, if I got that right. And also, um, Strong Heart's back on, saying just do the love thing. I love that. Okay, so back to a little bit of Huna. Um, one of their other concepts is there are no limits. And I've been saying that for seven years. If there are no limits in life, maybe there are really no limits. When you're in your heart, you know no bounds. The details, what you think you can and cannot do, tend to fall away and you're just in an action zone, an action point itself. Angels will help you with this. 
you literally start off any of the exercises that you do with me or you do on your own with like that listening to angels book by asking angels to come in and help you get out of thinking and into your heart. So by being sort of a greater presence, greater presence in your heart, you're letting go more and allowing what you're fully capable of, listening, getting hugs and seeing. So another concept with the Huna thing is energy flows where attention does. Everything has energy. Now that's two different concepts in my book. I've also been saying for a long time, coincidentally, that where you put your focus is where you put your focus. Where, how you spend your energy is how you spend it. I don't think you can get in trouble with those, they're redundant, but it's everyone's rolling somehow. They're not realizing they're pouring their energy out, especially with words, thoughts, thinking, judgments, reaction, and the type of knowing that doesn't get anything done, the type of knowing that actually precludes possibility. Um, it's why when we know somebody four doors down is not a nice person and we want to hammer them, we say something like, they're a jerk. We don't realize that we're not really helping anybody's situation out. We are generating negativity that we are in. We're sending it out. It's going to be coming right back. Our vibration is not a happy vibration. We've generated something and like attracts like. One way or the other in your life, you've experienced this, you know this, some of you already have been living and breathing this stuff for a long time. But just catching your thoughts, your words as much as possible before you send it out there does such a world of good. And that on the flip side is mantras, NLP, positive reinforcement, um, stating your intentions, walking around, or it's what an athlete does with the visualization before they go to do their athletic endeavor. A downhill skier with headphones on, they've got their ski poles, they've got the boots on, they're in three feet of snow, two feet of snow, but they've got no skis on. They are listening to their music and they're visualizing the grand slalom course down below. That is what meditation's about. That is what a mantra, a mudra with your hands. That is what half the exercises are out there is giving us enough room for maneuver down here, practicing a full stop so we can appreciate that light bulb and actually see the filament. I mentioned a light bulb exercise before at the very beginning, if you just came in. Um, it's, it's getting to the heart, which has unlimited potential, and it's learning to stick your elbows out and be there and thump your chest and say, you're awesome, and then to get cracking, living. Make your requests to angels. Make your request to some amazing Native American chiefs. Make your request to Plato and Seneca. I even teach manifesting. You can see angels not just in a distant sort of fashion, but you can start to feel angels give you a hug. You can see angels helping you with seeing energy flows. We're flowing energy all the time. You've gone to the airport to pick up a cousin, a relative, a friend. You haven't seen them in a while, but they're one of your favorite people. You're excited when you get to the airport. You look out and, you know, 70 meters away, 70, uh, 200 feet away is that friend. They light up when they see you. You light up when you see them. There's a connection. You think of someone across the globe, across the country, and they call you that day, the next day, and it's one of those synchronicity moments. Everything is energy, everything. And you don't even have to worry about whether you think that's true or not, but where you put your focus is where you put your focus. There's a connecting, there's a synchronicity, there's a, there's a way you can attract outcomes. Um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. You don't ever have to talk to an angel. Just trust that you're not alone. Angels are here to help. Put your request out silently. Words from the heart. For those who are religiously inclined, prayer. Um, or if you're Buddhist and you still do prayers, do it that way. Words from the heart wrapped with your being and love. Give it to the universe. Let the universe do its job. The universe is here to help make stuff happen. It's not up to man necessarily. So that's a bit of a judgment from me, but we're not really here to have to fix everything. It's not really up to us. I'm quoting an angel. Don't shoot the messenger on that one. Ditch it if you have to ditch it. I think it's, it's like eat, pray, love. It's back to that groceries moment in India where that one actor tells Julia Roberts, the only thing you can control is what you wear and your thoughts. 
And I think I would rephrase that. I've always liked to say that there's sort of a two foot, three foot sphere around you. And that's what you're really in control of. So if you're going to be mindful or conscious or aware about anything, it's catching your thoughts and how you develop your personal story. There's the personal legend from the alchemist on the shelf behind me. That's what you're looking, your personal treasure. That's what you're looking for. That's what you're developing is your personal legend. Your personal story, why not shape it a little more? Why not get help from angels, from Chogyam Trungpa, from Buddha, from Sai Baba? Why not do whatever healing you think you need to do, which is basically a form of letting go? Get more compassion and love in and let go what doesn't serve you anymore. Your past story, the way most people tell it, is a limiting story that directly impacts your future. Most people aren't aware that when they go to tell what happened to them in the last 10 years or as a child, that that is a way of spending energy that ends up coming full circle and limits how much fun you're gonna have in the future, who you're gonna meet in the future, whether you're gonna meet that soulmate right away. People have to do generally more letting go. There's work stress, there's family stress, there's what are perceived obligations. Paying the bills, lack this, I don't have enough money, I've got no time, I'm stressed, I don't feel well. Worse, you've got disease or illness. Um, some of the stuff is written in your life, you signed up for it before you came in. Again, another one of those moments I'm, I'm adding a little bit of detail, toss that out of the window. But your thinking generates a lot of stuff, not just good outcomes when you start to work and no work at all. When you start to let go and flow, you start to work with angels, just picture what it means to get any answer to absolutely any question. And on the fly, you're out and about and you ask to your favorite angel, hey, where should I pull in for a cup of coffee? And in a pandemic, imagine how much fun that is when you're like, hey, where's a safe place for me to pull in for a cup of coffee? And you get your answer. And then you might even be like, I don't want my usual, I wanna shake things up today. What coffee should I get? and you get a fantastic suggestion, you enjoy your cup of coffee. Even crazier, you go into a shop, let's say the pandemic's subsided a little, somebody opens the door for you and steps back, socially distanced, and says just the thing you were thinking about the day before, just the thing you needed to hear. You look at the person, tall gentleman, twinkly eyes. It's an angel in human form, I'm gonna put that out there, who is just popping in for 30 seconds. You never see him again after this. You go through the door, Maybe they've disappeared right away. Maybe you can't find them again a minute later. But angels show up in human form, and I mean that for real. That is a stretch of the imagination. Anyone calling BS, I'm with you all the way, except I've gone through that um, in Stockholm, in New York, in Maui, in Weehawken, New Jersey, again and again and again with the same figure. It's crazy. So what I'm trying to say here is angels totally exist. They're fun. You can get suggestions for anything. Trust me, they are not going to give you every single answer to take away some of the instructional purpose of you growing. I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm not gonna do it all. They're going to at times say, go do the work. Just like the best teacher, master, wise leader, whatever I'm trying to say, philosopher might do in some organization, or a Tony Robbins, Byron Katie, Eckhart Tolle, they're going to at some point punt and be like, hey, why don't you go do the thing first we're talking about and then come back to me and we'll fill in the blanks. So it's real life figures as if you had 25 of your favorite aunts and uncles who are always smart, never critical, never judging. They are completely available to help you out and they help you grow organically the way you should have if we all didn't do so much thinking and stuff like that. So it's super fun to do, super fun to meet these folks. There's a huge healing component. It's all about more love and compassion and easing up on the thinking accelerator. We're all pounding that sucker down. We're all in a Ferrari. We think we're going somewhere, but those Ferraris have no wheels. They're on cinder blocks, on four blocks. We're gunning away. We think we're going somewhere. If we are going somewhere out and about in the community, we're doing circles. We're spinning. That's the rat race. All of us know this in one form or fashion, but just getting out of thinking a little bit more, 10% a day, an hour a day, break it into four 15 minute components, taking a breath, communing with nature, getting outside, cooking something but going so small in the steps that you actually enjoy cutting onions or doing the dishes. Thich Nhat Hanh, Pieces Every Step, what a great book. 
All right, I'm gonna take a time out here. I'm gonna do two or three personal things. I got two dogs sleeping at my feet, so I'm not gonna wake them up and show it, but this is a couple personal items. I do I like doing art. My mom was an artist. I put marbles into glass bottles. I can't tell if you can tell how shiny this is. Let me see if I can get the light on it. But so I do all size bottles, all different types of marbles. Sometimes put a glow in the dark marble in there. You know, from if anybody likes Cheerios or knows Cheerios um, from those days. Also, sketching. I sketched one angel, and people have been able to ask this Japanese anime version of an angel named Heather. She makes hearts in her photos. Daytime, nighttime, indoors, outdoors, you're going to see hearts in photos. She's in the Listening to Angels book. That's $4.99. If you go to Amazon, it's Amazon.com. They have a very specific formula for getting an, uh, for getting to an author's profile page. If it's James Patterson, it's just amazon.com forward slash author forward slash James Patterson. But you don't have to put in my name. It's I got the word angels. I got really lucky. An angel named Charlotte helped me with that. You just go to amazon.com forward slash author forward slash angels. In that book for five bucks, um, you get to meet Heather. You get to see one of her photos that's a heart. I drew this Japanese anime picture. One day I'll do Japanese anime um, for angels and it's just as good as a real photo. It's just as good as having your eyes shut. It's just as good as seeing Heather as a Portuguese ballerina taking time off from life in Maui and I got to surf with her for a day and chat. I didn't know she was an angel at, a time, at that time but found out afterwards and boy did it make my Hawaiian trip just being able to hang out with her. Um, it literally was the highlight of my trip. I was there for surf class. I was getting up, I think, at 5 a.m. because it was so hot a little bit later to go running, go to surf class. And then I ditched the surfboard to go bodyboarding, which is my absolute passion. If you haven't noticed my posts, you know, the Hawaiian theme, just surfing, water, water's consciousness. Um, I love water. I love ocean. I love seals. I love surfing. I love bodyboarding. I love windsurfing, anything I can get my hands on. Um, so back to angels. Um, it's mind-blowing how big this service is and yet how hard it is even for me to grasp, even for an Omega Institute, a 1440 Multiversity Alternatives UK, um, Hollyhock up in Canada, uh, Esalon, Kripalu, Canyon Ranch, they're, they're fantastic. Canyon Ranch has an amazing wellness spiritual program. Um, Jonathan Ellerby, who was the ex, he's now the ex spiritual director at Canyon Ranch, who was there for four years, has done the service. He's been such a nice guy, so supportive. Get to talk to him tomorrow. I'm very excited. If for any reason you're checking this out, Jonathan, a big shout out to you. Please check out his book. It's called, uh, I believe, A Return to the Sacred. Fantastic book. Um, he's a lot of fun. He had 11 years training on a Lakota Sioux reservation and a lot of other different experiences as well. So he is the full package. I know that when I was popping maybe eight or nine or 10 years ago, wondering what the heck is this about? What's this intuitive thing and how could angels possibly exist? I grabbed his PhD thesis that I just found on the internet. It was fantastic. It was all about his time with the Lakota Sioux tribe, probably South Dakota somewhere in North Dakota and also in South Africa. So uh, what a fascinating individual, big shout out to him. So. Back to the big picture, um, unconditional love figures that are like spirit guides, Dullknife, Red Shirt, Geronimo, fantastic fellows. Dullknife is wisdom with some humor. Red Shirt's like the gentlest mom in the world. Think of the gentlest mom you know. He doesn't do t humor too much, he will, but anybody who's in a pickle, in a bind, just lost their job, has a health issue, um, going through difficulties in relationships, people tend to gravitate to him right away. He just knows how to deliver the goods gently, the way you need to hear it. You hear everything in a way that propels you to action. This is every bit of woo-woo-woo, spiritual self-help, Tony Robbins all the way, but measured, the way you need to hear it to get your butt moving. Um, not too much one way, not too little either. You have no privacy. There's some invisible way that this all just transpi transpires. Angels and Native American chiefs and Buddha and Chogyam Trungpa, they have a clear picture. They're not limited by human thinking. thinking think about how much thinking that we do. Um, so let's see what some folks are saying coming in. I've got LV here. 
I've got Luca. I've got Sally Francis, who's writing a very nice note. I've got Barbara Godfrey. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's get back to some commentary, and I'll get back to the Huna list, which I had left. I'll re recap the first three things on the seven Huna items, and this is just a quick way to once and for all kind of recap the whole Huna way of operating. I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt, I might as well do it. The world is what you think it is, all systems are arbitrary. Number two, there are no limits. Separation is a useful illusion. Yeah, it's the duality thing. Everything is interconnected. I think uh, once you go to the other side and if you've successfully reconciled or gone to the light or whatever you wanna call it, I think that becomes crystal clear then. I think there are people who hold out for decades and decades and decades and decades and decades and then on their last moment here with their life flashing before their eyes, they finally get that lesson. I don't think you have to wait that long. I think you can just jump to it. You know it from sports when you're in the flow, art, music, family relationships when they're flowing and working, the harmony moments. I guess what I'm trying to say with the, the biggest picture here is you can be more happy more often in the heart for absolutely no reason at all. You don't have to, and we all fall into this trap of basing our happiness, our perceived happiness on externals. There's an authentic presence that Buddhists and many others talk about that you can grow with the help of angels. You don't have to have their help either, um, but you just own who you are. Everyone's got an amazing interior. Everyone has a unique life path that if they would just pay a little bit of attention to, the universe is gonna come right in and help shove you down that path a little bit. And while there may seem like many steps, I'm also gonna argue there are no steps. You take the one step that matters. You go into your heart, let go, deep breath, be present. Once you're present, you gain more clarity. Your vibration goes up. It's why there's endless meditation classes. It's why yoga is so popular. It's why there's so many spiritual woo experts. It's why my bookshelf is filled with endless books that are all helpful. They're all pointing in the same direction. They're all at different vibrational levels. So are we. And so there's a right match for everybody at every time. Even if somebody's um, not above board, I was just talking with, with someone about this the other day, even if someone's only kind of halfway there and they're a teacher, um, they're still doing a service, whether they realize it or not, helping people along their path. Um, everything in life is our instruction. How's that for positivity? So also switching to the big picture, abundance. Um, let's talk about that. It doesn't have to be financial. Positivity itself is abundance. I don't remember if that's Gabriel or Michael, but one of those archangels said that. Positivity itself is abundance. So I'm gonna do a full stop in this. I am gonna try to show anybody out there who's gung-ho, so say to yourself, I'm gung-ho. Take a deep breath. I will tell you an extra dad joke. If you're laughing, you know you've let go. What do you call a baby camel? Born with no humps, zero humps. Answer, Humphrey. Okay, give yourself permission to see. Be in your heart. Everyone has a huge heart. I don't care whether you've seen auras before in your life, you do it every day. I don't care if you've never heard of that before and you're like, whoa, full stop. That's scary. I don't know if I can see an aura. You've gotten goosebumps before, just felt happy walking around a supermarket seeing a mom hug a kid, a Hallmark moment. You see a baby deer and you're like, oh, that's pretty. You didn't hit it. Um, you've got a cute dog, like I've got a dog right now, asleep in the sun. If you've got a cute dog, you know what I'm talking about. All those moments that make life magic. Clear out, be in your heart. If you have to grab one of those memories, that's one of your best life memories. A beach somewhere, mountain, woods, hiking, whatever your thing is. I'll reach, if you were in Hawaii at all, feet in the water, wind blowing through your hair, make it that. So get in your heart, go ahead and if you can trust that angels exist, you don't have to see them, you don't have to hear them, just ask angels to help you right now and see if you can see a little bit of energy on my fingertip. And no, this is not my fingertip, this is just a Bic lighter with the flame. But I'm showing you that if that's a Bic lighter and there's the flame, if you can see this, you can see what you're gonna see in the next exercise. And if you want, let go enough right now Deep breath, trying to feel your authentic presence to make this sound spiritual and woo woo woo. But go ahead and see little balls of light. People see angels around me all the time. And I'll even tell you another joke that's totally bad. It's a dad joke all the way. Why did the rabbit fall down that well? He didn't see that well. And what do you call a fish 
with no I. I'm not going to explain that joke, but be in your heart. Allow. Don't look. Look at me, and if you need to look at my nose, if you need more help, look at my forehead. Look for balls of light that would be angels, a flash, streak. Look for an aura right here. I'll go on an old surf trip. And just look here, but the more help you need, stare at my forehead. Check out. You know when a professor's really boring, a really exciting professor, it doesn't matter which type. An hour class becomes 15 minutes with the exciting professor. It becomes three hours with the one hour bad professor. Um, and what you can end up doing is staring at a person's head, the back side of their head, a couple rows down. And that's when a lot of people accidentally see auras. At a restaurant, if we ever get back to the pandemic, full restaurants, pick somebody who's not gonna catch you, stare at the back of their head, stare at the front of their head. You can see the very faint, the more you let go, the bigger it gets, the more the colors kick in. A faint white, a faint hazy gold, green, yellow, purple, five colors at once, rainbow light. Go ahead and do that, but right now, I'm just throwing you off because try to look at the tip of my finger and see if you can see a little bit of light right now. It'll look like that big lighter. My finger's getting warm. I did this yesterday, I did it the day before, I did it the day before that, but one-on-one. -on -one. You're out there, you're in the privacy of your own viewing spot. Go ahead and shake your shoulders. Do the chubby checker, Elvis Presley. Shake those hips, let go. Shout if you need to, do the Japanese thing. Huge shout to just startle you and get you back into the moment. Clap your hands loud. Get some ting shaws, light some incense. Replay this part of the video. Take a look at the tip of my finger. And of course, you're gonna get one more dad joke and leave your eyes on the tip of my finger. What did the fish with no eyes say when he hit a wall? Damn. And as you're chuckling, take a look at the tip of the finger and just see if you can see a little wisp of light coming off of it. And that's it for a little bit of an exercise, interactive. Okay, back to the Huna stuff. Now is the moment of power. Everything is relative. So Eckhart Tolle, power of now. He covers those bases quite well. Abraham Hicks, nonstop power of now. Be in the moment. I'll tell you, I was running around New York City for 16, 20 years doing the corporate thing. I'm not sure I ever knew there was a, a moment, a now. Um, I got complimented on elevators with the fastest thumbs in the West back when there were Blackberries. They had the best little keyboard and I could get the work of five people done, you know, 20 emails out, just one trip out the door down an elevator to go get a cup of coffee and back. So um, long story short, the more you can slow down, the more you are giving yourself a chance to breathe, to be in that inner space, to be in your heart, and the more you're allowing extra stuff to happen. That's the key to this all. And so I, there's that Indian expression, a fast mind is a diseased mind, a slow mind is um, like good, and then a, a still mind is divine. Um, there's probably a little more to that expression, but the idea is even the Navy SEALs have a, uh, a saying about going slow and, and, it, and it goes on from there. But I always tell runners that you have to go slow to go fast. The slower you can go here, the more you can ease up being married to your thoughts, being controlled by your thoughts, being the prisoner at the window looking out, the door is always open. Prison cell, if you want to room that metaphor, Plato's ca cave, there's no actual locked door, but no one ever wants to turn back and look at their own situation and realize how much thinking is actually going on. Half of what you think it when you're letting go isn't even the letting go, it's more thinking. Ego wants to constantly control your perspective constantly wants to keep maneuvering around you in a very basic way. The ego is not that sophisticated, but it, but it gets the job done of feeling you, helping you feel secure, helping you feel like you have a lot of problems so you know exactly where you're at. When really there are no problems, every single problem is an opportunity for growth. The second you learn that lesson, the problem dissipates, you've moved on, you get a whole new set of problems. And I would switch that language around to it's all opportunities, more lessons. Life is never not about learning. Angels make sure that life is like that. Um, for the folks who don't want to pay attention, you know, it's a painful it's a painful path and stuff happens and then you start thinking things just randomly happen to you. But as soon as you own and are accountable for your energy and how you spend your energy and the decisions you're making, consciously or unconsciously, you're still responsible for it. Not, not trying to lecture here, it's just kind of how it rolls. 
Um, let me keep peeking at who's checking in. I've got a few folks here. Yep, Sally Francis is popping in a few more times. Hi to Sally again. Okay, back to some of the Huna stuff. Now is the moment of power. Everything is relative. Um, I say make everything your relative. Make every embrace everything, even the unpleasant stuff. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. I think we're going back to some Indian quotes there. So the next one: to love is to be happy with. Everything is alive, responsive, and aware. To love is to be happy with. Not happy with something. To love. To do the act of love. To be in your heart. To be in the flow of life. To have fun. To sparkle in the moment. To shine. To appreciate. To allow. To love is simply to be happy with. That is the definition of unconditional love. Be happy for absolutely no reason at all. Share joy, be joy. The very first angel everybody meets is an angel named Joy. Be happy for no reason at all. The biggest point of the exercise. The more you learn to get out of the conditional flow and into the limitless flow, the more stuff dawns on you. And it takes time. Even if you were the greatest student ever for letting go, you let go of your morning ritual, you let go of your afternoon this, you ditched Byron Katie and Eckhart Tolle, who you were thought the most fabulous. You, you pick up Neil Donald Walsh um, and Abraham Hicks. Everything is great for a little while for helping propel you forward. And you think it's amazing for a little while, but your ego tends to get in there and damp it dampens it down, puts it in its place. I'm talking about getting out of your own way in such a way that you not just you don't just get action steps for all the externals, you grow as well. You kind of get gifted a little bit of the grace, faith, hope, I don't know, harmony, and you, and you grow your consciousness level, your awareness within. That's kind of private between you and the universe, but that that is something um, I would emphasize. You, you learn to be able to hit the happiness button for no reason at all more often a day. Because again, we have so many externals, people, the news, politics, this, that, my sports team's not doing well. Um, I'm not performing well at work. I got a bad night's sleep three days in a row. There's so many ways we can react to everything. And taking a simple breath, smiling, laughing, telling dad jokes, hearing dad jokes, um, exercise, diet, food, nutrition. I think all food's good food, but I mean, there's a whole business out there for proper nutrition. Going for a walk with your dog, hugging your dog, except for when they're asleep. Um, all that stuff is the name of the game in life. Okay, to love is to be happy with. The next one, and we're almost done with this, all power is within, everything has power. I would just say, you have a tremendous amount of unlimited potential here. And everything has consciousness around you. And when you get into your consciousness, your heart, you start to connect more with everything else. You know when you do gardening or mowing the lawn, and you're in your heart enjoying the moment, everything flows better, versus hitting the garden bed, and everything goes wrong. I mean, there's the two extremes. We've all been through both. So there's times where we can actually wash the dishes to quote Thich Nhat Hanh and we actually enjoy it. So getting into the swing of things. When you do a session with me for 90 minutes, I start you off seeing energy. You can see it on my hands, your hands. You can see my aura. If it's in person and you've got your sister with you, your cousin or your friend or your mom, you can each see your energy and then each hold out a finger and be half the glow stick. You can see the flow between you, like ballerinas on a stage, how they flow, cooks in a kitchen, soccer players on a soccer team, they just know where the other's gonna be most of the time when they're playing well. Um, so you get to see what's already been around you, what always will be around you. You get to see the force from Star Wars. It's every color on the map, 25 colors at once, rainbow light, white light. If it's ever gray, it's just thinking, let go a little more, it's the Hindu chakras. I got asked for years, what does it all mean? I've done it for 3,500 people. Um, and, and I saw it originally in the Celestine Prophecy, I think the movie was on HBO. I, I didn't know angels existed at that point. I just got cocky, my feet was up, my feet were up on the couch and I said, I can do that. And I saw white light everywhere on my hands. I think I'm the only one that jumped up and freaked out for 15 minutes. Went to my kitchen and started yelling, what did I just see? But it's probably a great metaphor for how slow I am on the uptake, but I'm an incredible quick teacher for slicing right through what you know to help you let go of the details and experience very quickly some very important letting go exercises. So seeing your energy, seeing it on a sleeping dog, seeing it on a tree, no big deal. I know it sounds like a big deal. 
And I just helped uh, that film director, who's also a tremendous creativity teacher at like literally all the big places around the U United States, Omega Institute, Esalon, and so on. Um, Barnett Bain, got to help him, and got to help him, he's already seen auras before and stuff, but I got to help him do it that way uh, from the movie. Plus, got to help him meet angels and all the rest. So you can see his testimonial. I think I even put it on the details surrounding this Facebook live stream. You can see it on my website. You can see it on some of my posts. Um, I'm just trying to let people know that it's okay that angels physically exist. They're here to come in, help you, practically speaking, tidy up whatever situation you would need help on. Picture, again, five of your best friends and five of your best relatives, passed over or alive, all rushing to your aid and sitting down for a whole day and mapping out everything you need to know. Getting that type of help, that doesn't really exist unless you're really organized with your calendar and your friends and your social network, which some people are. But these are unconditional love figures who aren't here to lecture or tell you you've chosen the wrong mate or anything else like that. This is just straight help from angels who want to help, who don't want to interfere. If you don't want this help, you're not going to see them, and you're fine. And if you never talk to angels, you're okay as well. If you can just trust that they're there, and again, I've got photos, if you can take a few baby steps with me and you contact me for a 90-minute discovery session, I charge $250 for that. I'm worth it. It's worth a lot more than that, a lot of mini miracles in that session. I charge for seven hours, $1,100 for the day. And I've just created a three month and a six month program, 27 hours for the three month, three times a month for three hours each. That's three months, that's 27 hours. And then three times a month for the six month program, but four hours each. You get immersed into the letting go, direct listening, direct hugs. You gain confidence. You see directly, you see multiple figures at the same time. You can even let go, let angels bring you your favorite passed over relative with their permission as well. You get to see them full on, have a two-way conversation, have a hug from afar, get anything transacted that you need to get transacted details wise. You're both concerned about Cousin Jimmy. You hear reassuring information about Cousin Jimmy or about your career path or anything else. You get a big shot of confidence, love, compassion in the arm. You get a big boost from life. You're not alone. I think that's probably the biggest thing we could say is you're not alone at all. Trust in that, take heart. Smile, take a load off your shoulders. So many people cry at some point who have been carrying around burdens, thinking their life story, it's complex. You know, the more complex it is, I would argue the greater the foundation you've been given for fantastic living once you've reconciled where you've come from. You've been given a tremendous capacity for greater love, compassion, sharing. And back to love. Love not shared is really not love. So in this political day and age, this news cycle that we're seeing, it is super easy to jump on the judging bandwagon. I do it, everyone else does it, and so on. But um, it's so much more fun to find a creative way to be like, wow, I really wish that person well, he would have judged. Wish them well, wish them well on their own path. We're all on our unique life path. We're all doing the best we can. That, remembering that someone's doing the best they can at, at any given moment, is a huge, like, what do you call that on the kettle? The, where the steam comes out. It's a huge uh, relief of pressure from the situation. Everyone is running around thinking that the way they're spending the ener their energy is fantastic. Um, they don't often realize what harm they're doing to themselves or others with the judging and everything else. A slight tinkering of how they roll with their words and their thinking can have tremendous um, benefits for how you roll in your well-being, how you roll in your approach to life, sort of a growth in your compassion and awareness, your love, and the love that then you're able to share with others, complete strangers. I just put a post up on my personal Facebook page that I think is fun. It's literally that a smile or a few kind words to a stranger can have an amazing impact. Everyone is looking for validation. You'll never know what a random smile or a random wave to a stranger while you're walking. Even at a stoplight, you just wave and give them a knowing look, especially if you're that type of person who can do it with some confidence. Um, you don't know that that person wasn't having one of the hardest moments in their life. It's like that Plato quote, be kind to everybody around you for you don't know what sort of harder battle they're fighting and they are fighting a harder battle. If you can be in that moment appreciating the now, being in your heart, being compassion, being love, then technically everybody else is fighting a harder battle because they're all running around thinking, doing the rat race thing, and all the rest.
And I do have a quote from Red Shirt, not to make him sound harsh at all, he's the gentlest mom in the world, but he talks about this day and age, mankind, people, humans, especially in America, that they like to use the excuse of business and the rat race for a lack of awareness, which is just presence in the heart, that's all. People are so busy doing what they think they need to do or suffering through what they think they need to suffer through for or just moving so fast in the brain that they don't realize how much lack of awareness there is these days. That's not a great comment for our society because we're very modern technology. We build skyscrapers. We just had a whole new phenomenon in space with a technological leap there, domestic company. It's some pretty amazing stuff. But at the end of the day, you're given all your tools. You simply have to dust off some of the tools in the toolbox and get cranking living and everything starts to unfold. Let's take a look at who else has come in here. Stephanie Beck, never alone. I like it. Sally Francis is jumping all over the conversation here. She said yes. Okay, let's give a few more quotes randomly here. Adversity is not a negative. Wow. Um, adversity is not, not a negative. It's merely a lesson to be gained. That came from Mary and Jesus combined back in 2015. A listener donated that quote back. I thought that was pretty deep. I really like that one. And let's go back to a final Huna thing. I'm, I'm gonna stretch out seven little items for Huna over the course of an hour. Effectiveness itself is the measure of truth. There's always another way to do anything. And I think Huna's final, it's, it's not dogma, it's, it's not exclusive either. If it works, it's Huna. And it's really just talking about giving love, being love, and it talks about aloha, which is both loving power and powerful love. Love is the only ethic of Huna I'll cap off all the Hawaiian stuff, except to mention that there's a little Kapuna Auntie Margaret lady who I describe as love on a gentle Hawaiian breeze that you can actually meet. She's just so fantastic. Not only is she a healer with her hands, but and not only is she a position to answer any of your questions in any language. If you're from France, you'll hear it in French. If you're from Germany, you'll hear it in German. Um, she can show you things. She can help you smell the Hawaiian Ocean on the air. An angel can do that for you for anywhere on the globe. If you like the Indian Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, Nantucket, a certain beach in Florida, you can close your eyes and get taken there. You can hear the waves, see the ocean, smell the ocean. A little bit of floral smell, hibiscus if you're in Hawaii on the air. Angels know no limits. They're even able to alter your path a little bit. Now, a lot of stuff is written in your life. A lot of stuff isn't. Um, Learning to know what's what and where you can make a difference for yourself, for others, is part of this fantastic experience of meeting angels. Um, Judith, you just signed in and have joined. Yay, she wrote. Yes, love it, mahalo. Okay, so let's look at a few more random quotes to see what happens. There's an angel named Abe, he's Abraham. He's a tall Dumbledore, Gandalf figure. Grandfather energy um, on everyone's team. Boy, when I've been driving around town, if it was Austin, he'll show me a like a father and son moment that practically it brings me to tears usually. He shows me the human condition. He is so amazing. He loves showing up in angel human form down on planet Earth. He likes handing out fish, not teaching fishing. So he likes to help out. I first saw him maybe, I'm gonna have to make this up, seven or eight years ago in a January. It was nighttime by the Whole Foods headquarters. There's a diner, a 24-hour diner diagonally across the street. I'm sitting in an SUV with someone else, and I see this giant Hagrid-looking fellow, to keep doing movie references, but a Hagrid fellow with Starbucks cups of coffee under his arm, and he's headed one way, but I start tugging on someone else's shoulder and say, is that an angel? Is that an angel? Check with the crew. Everyone's like, not now, not now. Angels aren't answering. Very, very rare for them not to do that. And I think by the ninth time I asked, and he, he stopped on the hood of the car and looked at us, and um, it was quite the moment. The other person in the car looked into his eyes and kind of saw the internal. I only saw the external, the Starbucks cups of coffee. She missed that part. Um, and by the time I got an answer, yes, that's an angel, it just all of time was mixed up. I got out of the car, he was gone. I guess it was a 20 degree night. He was on his way to deliver cups of coffee to the homeless to make sure they were feeling comfortable and warm and probably some kind words as well. Take that with a grain of salt, but that's one of those types of angel experiences um, anyone can have. You've always heard about the car wreck and the person who's, it wasn't their time, 
the die. A total stranger comes up, pulls them out of the car. The state trooper gets there and tells the person that there was no one else. They didn't see anybody else. There couldn't have possibly been somebody else. Uh, and yet you know that person got pulled out by someone and then they disappeared. It was their guardian angel or an angel helping out. Um, I've heard a story down in a local, uh, somebody from Texas who just, small town, they needed to hear something. They pass a stranger on the street. They hear those exact words from the stranger. They turn, that person was gone. I'm not gonna get into too much of that. It's woo woo woo. All of this is woo woo woo. I'm woo woo woo. But if you can allow for even the remote possibility of this, get a dialogue going with your own team of angels, your guardian angel, your angel for this stage in life, your angel for your business, your relationship angels, some passed over relatives, um, some spirit guides. Why not? Meet your crew, get the dialogue going and have as much fun as you can have. I'm just gonna check, see who else is online. I'm gonna do another quote for you here. Um, here's another one, remain in love, positivity, and acceptance for all. I used that quote today in a recent post on the personal page. What a great bit of advice. Remain in your heart. Positivity itself is the greatest space you can kind of occupy. And acceptance for all. What is acceptance for all? It means not worrying about other people's details. People are gonna roll how they roll. We know this. So why resist what already is? That's, that's the big crux of this. And boy, does that get complicated when we talk sports, politics, religion, anything else. The people who can simply get into their heart, nod, and focus on what they can control, and I don't mean it that way, but focus on what they can appreciate and what they can contribute to in a loving way. Those are the ones who sort of surge forward and spark a little more, and I'd say have a little bit more fun in life. So let's go big picture one more time with angels. I've got photographs of angels. I've got different books out. I've got a little book called Listening to Angels that is the roadmap to how to do it. It was written completely by angels. It's a very gentle, gentle handling of the topic, what to do step by step. There are seven photos of seven angels that were given to me. Um, Archangel Michael is one of them that you use as props to help you let go a little more. Keep your eyes on the photo, ask a question, listen, get an answer. That's $4.99 at Amazon. That's amazon.com forward slash author forward slash angels for my author profile. You'll see the book there and can grab it that way. I have a glow stick Zen book that was two thirds written by the crew. That's much more of a longer, it's 1700 pages. Um, it's a book that helps a person who's doing a lot of thinking. I still say go to Byron Katie and loving what is and her, the work. Um, program. She will crowbar you free of your own thinking and what you think you know. She does the same move every time. Helps show you that what you're saying isn't necessarily absolute. Um, it's relative. And she helps empower you on that front so that you watch what you say in the future and watch what you attract back to you. Um, so the Glow Stick Zen book is a little bit of like a path up a mountain. You get a Sherpa um, you get assistance along the way with some humor, exercises, and stuff like that. Even if you do get through the book and you have a eureka moment, you still have to come back to the bottom of the mountain. And then I'd argue every day is that trip up the mountain. How much can you let go when you can remember to let go, if you can remember to remember when you remember? Um, that's not original. There was a Buddhist Lama, Lama Surya Das, I think, who uh, used to say that all the time to his students for 35 plus years. Okay, let's do another quote. And I have angel courses, $49.99 each at the website. Again, for the do-it-yourselfers out there, just go grab an angel course. Grab the one that says angel class number one. That's when you meet an angel named Joy. It should take you step by step, go real slow. When you buy those classes, those are the ones you, you're, you're, you're taking it upon yourself. It's a one-way ticket, no refunds on those. If you grab me for a session, it's 90 minutes, it's 250. I like to go a little bit over if I can and throw in a few extra angels and other figures. And I'm a lot of fun in person. My strength is helping you work around your perceived obstacles, limits, where you think you're gonna have difficulty. I help you shift your perspective so you get into a, a wide open space and you realize, wow, I really can do this. And it's fun. There's a lot of humor and a lot of fun. The seeing part is definitely, um, it's, it's pushing it a little. It's, it's hard to imagine that you could actually see, but if you have a favorite neighbor down the block, a favorite cousin across the country, and you see them on a video, you see them down the street, people that you meet out and about when we were completely social running around town, 
you know what it's like to see somebody. It's magic. Um, angels can do anything. They show up and you see them in light energy form initially in baby steps in a way that you can own it and go, wow, I just saw an angel. And yeah, your mind's reeling a little, but the good news is there's a lot of compassion that that's kind of like the oil in the machinery. It keeps you calm. Um, so you get your answers, you get your hugs, you see, and you're learning to push all your sensory boundaries out. You can smell any ocean in the world. You can go surfing anywhere in the world. I do a lot of little mini guided meditations, but it's really not guided meditation at all. It's a misnomer because just for the first minute, I might guide you. I tell you ahead of time what should happen. Angels do the whole thing. Sai Baba does the whole thing. Chogyam Trungpa, Buddha. You go to a Buddhist temple and have a little ceremony. You stand with Chogyam Trungpa at the top of a Tibetan mountain. Have a chat with him. You sit with Sai Baba under a tree. For anybody from India who just likes the Indian thing, the Hindu thing, Sai Baba, compassion. You know, he does straddle Buddhism, Hindu, Islam. He's compassion, compassion, compassion. But you sit with him under a tree with your eyes closed. Angels make this happen. They escort you from the beginning of the exercise over to the rug. You sit with him. When he touches your forehead, it's incredible. A lot of unlocking, a lot of letting go, a lot of healing, a lot of compassion happens. Again, you can sit in silence with them, but if you're American, most of us, we have a lot of questions. We want to get stuff addressed. You can give them a topic to talk about. You can just be like, hey, what do I need to learn? I think that's one of the most powerful questions you can ask a Native American chief, Mother Teresa, Mary, Plato, anybody. What are the questions I should be asking? What should I start doing? Stop doing more of? Keep doing. Get compliments. You can get a ton of compliments. Get patted on the back. Okay, jumping to a quote. Stephanie Beck, loving it. Thank you for writing in. Okay. The movie Peaceful Warrior by Dan Millman. What a great production. Looks like Disney made it. It's not quite a Disney production. There's a little bit of alcohol in there and a few curse words, stuff like that. Um, but it was made in 2006. Scott Mechlowitz was the main gymnast. It's about a story of a Berkeley gymnast. Really took place in 1968. It's Dan Millman's personal life story. He's a fantastic self-help guru. I don't think he's been on Oprah, Super Soul Sunday. He should have been. I think he is on the Watkins 100 list. He definitely belongs there. He's a lot of fun. He knows what he knows. He's continuing to do exactly what he needs to do. I think he just put a new book out in the last couple of years. Um, Way of the Peaceful Warrior is the main book. There's a great coaching book too, if you're a runner or anything else. I really like that book. I can't see it this second, but Way of the Peaceful Warrior is all you need. The book won't ruin the movie. The movie won't ruin the book. The movie stars Scott Mechlowitz as the gymnast, but then you're going to know the other actors. Um, Nick Nolte is the gas station attendant. We end up just thinking is called Socrates. That's a nickname that Dan gives him as the young student at Berkeley. And then there's Amy Smart. And it's the story of a gymnast that, again, has no room for learning. And that's all of us at any given moment. It's like Christmas Carol and Scrooge. We all go through our moments where we're shut tight like a clam or an oyster. And we really don't want to hear what the universe is telling us. And the more we do that, the more we resist, the more we suffer, the more bad things happen. We break an arm, we get sick, we lose the job. Those are the extremes. We just suffer at a, at a minor level if it's, if it's minor. But so um, Socrates ends up being like Mr. Miyagi, if I said it right. It's an adult karate kid type film. He's... Just the, the, the book, the movie are just chock filled with amazing um, statements. So I got a quote from that. And I would just add that um, from my experience and, and, and with all the respect in the world to Dan Millman and stuff like that, that is an angel that, um, that gas station attendant, an angel that plenty of people now have met, tons of people, who's a big kahuna kind of figure, Hawaiian shirt, big tough to hair right here, you get a bear hug from the guy. He is a great life, athletic, sports, all type, types of coaching coach. Um, fantastic fellow. So that's somebody I like to throw in for anybody who's actually read the book or seen the movie and um, very zen-like with the way he handles stuff. So um, that figure in the movie, Socrates, at one point tells Dan, everyone tells you what's good for you. They don't want you to find your own answers. They want you to believe theirs. I love that quote. He talks about looking inside and finding your own answers, learning how to do that. And angels, the ones that I'm talking about here and the other figures, all talk about that as well. I help you find a way to look within so you get your own answers forevermore. And it doesn't mean all the organizations, churches, self-help, Esalon, 1440 Multiversity, Alternatives UK, 
all the experts, self-help, woo-woo-woo, spiritual, you name it, zen, it doesn't mean they're not helpful or rendered useless. It's just, and they still play a place. I go right back to them even after an amazing angel experience. It's a form of meditation. It's a form of an exercise of doing something in another way that helps keep loosening up the constraints that ego and thinking that we all have, we're never gonna quite shake. Our constraints wanna come right back in the second we get open to kind of control things. And so the name of the game is how often can you hit the heart button and get out of what you know long enough to have an amazing experience. Yes, Jesus is part of the crew. Um, Jesus, somebody's asking right now, unconditional love figure, obviously there's no hierarchy or structure, but you can meet Mary, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, Sai Baba, Vishnu, Krishna, Ganesh, Rama, Lakshmi, Sri Kalashwar, if anybody knows Sri Kalashwar, very gentle young fellow who's love, 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 love. Reminds me of Auntie Margaret out of Hawaii, who's love on a Hawaiian breeze. You can meet your guardian angel as well. Um, I've got a pretty standard way of rolling. You meet 12 figures in a 90 minute session. If you're quick to the take and can learn to just experience it, you get your answers, you get your hug and you turn to me and you say, what's next? I get you more exercises. Whether we're talking about seeing energy around you on your hands, seeing balls of light and starting to interact with balls of light. Who needs photographs? If you can see a little ball of light, it's pink and you know it's the angel joy and you hear the angel joy talking to you from the ball of light, you connect you get a hug, you see a ball light in your hand, you bring it in, you get an amazing compassionate hug. Um, you wouldn't believe where it goes from there. If you can see energy everywhere, you can see a butterfly go across your room that an angel was making or Sai Baba. You can get a lotus flower in your hand. If hibiscus is your thing or it's rose, it could be that as well. Guess what? You have no privacy. Angel, Sai Baba, everybody else knows where you're at, knows what would tickle you pink no pun intended, and you get a pink hibiscus in your hand. Electricity, light energy form, not really there. If you go tomorrow to show the flower to someone, it's not gonna be there. You're seeing something that I don't know how else to describe, except you've seen enough sci-fi movies and enough special effects like Star Wars to know what I'm talking about. Angels have a way of working with light energy that just can show you things. Everything is energy, consciousness, a stone, a tree, a hummingbird, blah, blah, blah. So let's see who else um, has checked in. We've got Mary Beth here. Um, I do sessions via video most of the times, um, not with the pandemic going on, having people come over. Um, I love doing it in person. I think people get a little extra that way, but I've gotten really good at video chatting um, and everything else happens. You, you turn and in your room, your space, your backyard, I, I help, again, push your boundaries long enough to expand your senses. You get your answers, you get your hugs, you see full on, and then there's extra exercises. You can close your eyes and see as well. A lot of people like to do the closing the eyes thing. I make sure you see with your eyes open first and own that before we start closing um, our eyes. So everybody's got a different way of rolling. Everybody's good. Everybody has existing intuitive skills, certain things that you're great at. There's others who are like, ah, I don't even know what the word intuitive means. I don't even know what an angel means. Um, those people generally don't find me as much, but I can work with them in a heartbeat because I know exactly where they're coming from. I was a complete blank before, and I went through a lot of little experiences over time, and it took me a long time to um, get quick to the take. I'm not your fastest learner, but I'm an incredible teacher at slicing through and sort of just passing it on and helping you begin your own transformative uh, journey. Everyone has an amazing, unique life path that if you would just get out of your own way a little bit with the thinking long enough to get some guidance, you can get that journey underway. So why don't I do this? Why don't I go ahead and try to read out loud the epilogue from that $4.99 book called Listening to Angels. If you have any questions, I'd go to that. What a fantastic, for less than a price of, a, of an expensive Starbucks cup of coffee, you can pick up a book written by angels Take that with a grain of salt, but if you think I wrote this book, I, I will write you a handwritten thank you note and mail it off to you. Um, there's no way I wrote this book. Um, it's short, sweet, compassionate, gentle language, amazing quotes in it, and so here's a sample from it. It's an epilogue, the end of the book, listening to angels, go to Amazon, um, $4.99, it's electronic form only. Um, you can get this from iTunes if you want, or iBooks. Um, it's, it's all over, Kobo and stuff like that. 
So this is written by a specific angel, one angel named Dale, who coached Nadia Comaneci, the gymnast, not to win gold medals. Um, I don't know what's up with the gymnast and angels thing today and in general, but it is what it is. Um, he coached Nadia Comaneci, take that with a grain of salt, but it was her unique life path. Somehow he helped out. Um, fantastic fellow. I've seen him in human form in Nantucket, Weehawken, New Jersey, and the trails of Austin, Texas, and elsewhere. Very, very high energy fellow. Great for coaching for sports, for business, for life. Fantastic fellow. He's one of the seven angels you meet in the Listening to Angels book. Great sense of humor. Here it is, the epilogue. The Spiritual Life Path or Soul's Journey by Dale. A soul's journey happens over many lifetimes. A good analogy of the journey and understanding of its development can be likened to the relationship between an undergraduate and a master's degree. How so? You have to have one before the other. The undergraduate degree is about listening, releasing ego and being. After that, you are ready to get learning. This is the master's degree part. Ego is used as a defense mechanism. Let go of what? The details matter far less than you think. The less you know now, the less you can react to. The less you know now, the further you will go. Stop thinking, just be you. Discomfort is all ego, let go. No reaction, just action, move forward. Once you have your undergraduate degree, ego has no more control of you. There's a separation between here and here, so you can get going here. Once you have your undergraduate degree, ego has no more control of, over you. Everything negative has been released and a new path in life begins. Thinking equals ego. Ego has had its place until now. Let go once and for all to embark on this path. This is not about knowing, but continued learning. Few humans fully comprehend the difference here, so I'll repeat it. This is not about knowing, but continued learning with an exclamation point. Ego restricts and seeks control. It is negativity. Allow angels love and compassion into your world. Step towards compassion for self and others. There's healing and listening and loving in each moment. There's healing and listening and loving in each moment. The more you do it, the more you progress and expand consciously and more. And here's where I got the quote from that was fun in the last post a couple hours ago. Sometimes the person next to you or a stranger just needs validation via love and compassion. A smile changes any moment. So too does laughter or a few kind words. Be compassion to all, do it. I tell dad jokes to complete strangers all the time. Once the healing has begun for anyone, the soul's path can be looked at closer by that individual. But first to repeat, a person must get that undergraduate degree before getting the masters. They must learn the difference between thinking and awareness, only then are they ready. Appreciate your authentic presence, a little bit of Chogyam Trungpa and so on, Appreciate your authentic presence, who you are within, and the act of opening yourself up to life. A lot of us hide on a lot of fronts from new relationships, new careers, the thing we're supposed to be doing, sports, exercise, taking care of ourselves, taking care of others. Develop your ability to be comfortable in the unknown with the ever constant change in life. Regard others as you do yourself, breathe. There is nothing to gain here and nothing to lose either. That's underlined, just be. Find your inner warrior, no fear. Once that is done, then the soul's path may be brought forward for more definition. The inner warrior experience is like a path up a big mountain. At the top, there are amazing views, but to see anything, your eyes must be opened, open, opened. It's parentheses with the ED at the end, open, opened. So to see anything, your eyes must be open, opened. The journey is about shedding ego and opening up. The book Glow Sticks In, I got a, I got a little, uh, prop or praise or a little pointer here about why you should read that book. The book Glow Sticks End can be your Sherpa up that big mountain, but you will still need to take and own your personal steps up that fun winding path. The journey is as long or as short as you make it. Stop looking at things in the world and in life as how you can control their outcomes and release. I know so many people who think they need to control the outcomes and everything, and it's not the way it works. It's hard to grasp that concept. So stop looking at things in the world and in life as how you can control their outcomes and release. There is a new type of knowing to be employed here. It's wisdom stemming from compassion, but you must figure this out on your own to be action. This is life itself speaking to you. Your path is revealed to you daily, more so when your eyes, ears, heart, and mind are fully open. Slow down to enjoy the present moment, not the task or the result. 
I think Archangel talks about ego being getting caught up in achievements, failures, and successes. So let me repeat that. Slow down to enjoy the present moment, not the task or the result. Besides enjoying the moment, remember to laugh a lot, as much as you can too. Keep moving forward. Again, an egoless, egoless path will be great, but that's just not realistic. Enjoy each moment as it comes and believe that all moments truly can be the same. I love that. Have faith in this. The joy, capital J, the joy you develop from helping others and yourself along the way is your soul's growth. What a huge insight. And what happens again when you have that undergraduate degree? You begin to appreciate, understand, and live in non-judgment, love, belief, compassion, and love for all. Now, I'll reread that because I've even got more to add to that. You begin to appreciate and understand and live in non-judgment, love, belief, compassion, love for all, hope, faith, and you have confidence in the gifts given to you. You already have an amazing toolbox. No limits. Plus, you begin to see your destiny and your soul's path to find. It even says check out Glow Stick Zen for more. Glow Stick Zen 1,700-page book, two-thirds written by the crew. It's not that I wouldn't wish it upon anybody. It's a great book. But it's a long book. It's $200 at iTunes. I don't think more than a handful of people have ever gotten it. It's a special book. You buy it at iTunes or iBooks or Apple, all is one big purchase. But you can it's split into 22 books, very short, small ones, for $9.99 each. I would tell you to go ahead and get um, the first one. And I've provided the prologue for free on my personal Facebook page. It's about 15 posts down. You'll find it if you scroll down. And that prologue is a page and a half. It would take a minute and a half. It's a beautiful, beautiful bit of writing. And I think it's the best part of the book. And it's free. So I do not record any sessions. I keep it private for you. I've been asked if I could be recorded. I've certainly been on some, uh, what do you call those, video shows, podcasts, what have you. I was on Wisdom of, of North with Yannicka Oineas up in Oslo. You can find that broadcast on my website at michaelandreford.com. You can find it at my YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and type in Michael Andre, like the champagne, A-N-D-R-E Ford, and you can find a bunch of videos. I just uploaded a couple of these Facebook live streams. I just fixed one of the uh, past videos and so on. So you can see me in action there, but the, the Wisdom of the North show, I think that was 45 minutes long, and that's a lot of fun, and another guest came on at the end too. So if somebody needs to sign up for a session, you can just go to Ford.com. There's a way to book. It says services as the tab. You literally go in and just fill out some stuff. Um, a 90 minute session is 250 bucks. You pick the day. I send you some basic Q&A sheets to print out in advance. You meet three angels in the first round, three Native American chiefs in the second round, then three more angels, including Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, and another angel named Rebecca, plus Sai Baba, Mother Teresa, and Chogyam Trungpa, the Tibetan Buddhist monk. It's like 12 figures. If you're really fast at this, we tend to go over the 90 minutes just a little bit. I tend to slip in extra figures if you're a big Plato fan, a big Vishnu fan, a big um, St. Francis fan. Audrey Hepper, she's an actual angel. You get to meet her full on, um, wonderful hugs, very cool to see in person. Um, again, this stuff is direct. I have watched so many seasoned, woo woo woo, spiritual wellness, executives, veterans, authors, it goes over their head when they're not actually doing the service. There's plenty of people who have gotten it. I've gotten 8,000 no's over eight years. I've been rejected so much that my dad jokes have gotten better. Um, but for those 8,000 no's, I'm, I'm super appreciative and thankful. It's gotten me thicker skin. I've gotten 3,500 yeses or more than that. I've gotten acknowledgments. I've got 50 plus testimonials. I've got the photos. I'm off the hook for credibility because you do it all. All languages spoken, hugs, and it's really that epilogue we just talked about in the Listening to Angels book. You get to separate from your thinking long enough to go, holy cow, all those good moments in life, I can hit the button and have those more. I can get direct answers and so on. Okay, I might have hit the end of my session here. I am going to sign off and say thanks to everybody. Thank you very much for signing in. Till next Thursday, this is Michael Andre Ford in Austin, not Austin, Texas, in San Antonio, Texas. Go to my website when you can, check things out. Please like my Facebook business page at Angels Whisk, W-H-I-S-K, and I will see you soon next Thursday. Thank you again.